Today I'm going to tie a seed bead caddis emerger. It's an idea that I've been playing around with for the last couple of weeks using seed beads for heads and various bodies. I'm going to start out with a 2457 TMC caddis emerger hook and after pinching down the barb I'm going to thread on five of these check glass beads. It's a little bit of a delicate process but once you get it down, you can go fairly quickly. I like to do it sitting down in front of the TV. Once I do that, I'm going to put the hook in the vise and I'm going to put it pretty much eye down so I can start the thread behind the beads, making a minimal number of wraps. Today I'm going to use a Vivas 12 aught. I'm going to start the thread just like I normally would at the very back of the hook. I'm going to make just a few, few wraps to secure the thread and then I'm actually going to whip finish it. This step isn't required, but should you break your thread higher up on the body, this should save the fly from falling completely apart. Once I have that on, I'm going to wax my thread and I'm going to do a very thin dubbing noodle of olive hair's ear, or a color appropriate to your local caddis emergers. I just want to put just enough on the thread to fit in between those beads, taking in a minimal amount of space. Once I have a nice long dubby noodle so I can do the whole fly in one shot, I'll make a few wraps at the back of the hook to cover up the black thread. And then slowly, one at a time, I'm going to pull each bead back, move in front of it, make a couple of wraps, and move in front of the next bead. And I'm going to continue that all the way up the abdomen of the fly. Once I get up to the head, I'm just going to secure all those beads back nice and tight. and then I'm going to move up onto the head of the fly. Once I do that, I'm going to move my fly back up into the normal position and I'm going to pick off a Hungarian partridge feather just long enough to, to be about to the back of the bend of the hook. I'm going to pull the fibers back and I'm going to cut just the tip section out And these are going to be tied in as my legs. I'll sweep them back until I have a nice V. And then I'll wrap them over the top of the hook. And I'm going to pinch wrap and, and softly tie them in. a couple of nice wraps and check where they are. And at this point I feel like they're a little bit too long so I'm just going to pull that pull that forward until they're about the length that I want. And I'll adjust them as I go along here. Just pulling them so they sweep back to the either either side of the of the body and a little bit up. Pretty happy with that so I'll come in and cut that off close. Next thing I'll do is just pull those back and secure them down nice and tight. The next step is I'm going to tie in a small strip of olive thin skin. This is just a, a lightly mottled um, transparent plastic material. I'm really looking for a width about the, the gape of the hook and I'm just going to secure that in and, and clean that up. The next thing I'm going to do is put a little more wax on my thread and finish the head of the fly using a little bit more of the olive hair's ear dubbing. This dubbing noodle is going to be a little bit shorter and a little bit thicker and I'll adjust it as I go along here to get the proper size head. I'm going to make sure to go all the way back over that so that I don't 
pull the thin skin up over my thread and expose that thread body. Again, I'm going to add a little bit more here just to get the head exactly the, the size that I want it. I want it to be a little bit rougher, obviously, than the body here. And then I'm going to go up and finish off the head. And what I'm doing with these whip finishes is sort of saving my work um, so that I don't have a thread slip off while I'm doing some of these other steps. I'm going to rough up the head to kind of create a bit of a spot for that thin skin to lay against so I don't have a big fat blob at the top of the head. And I'll pull that tightly forward and secure it down with my thread. Adjust it if I need to, make a few wraps on top and then a few in front. And again, save my work so my thread doesn't slip off the head and ruin the work that I just did. I'm going to add a little bit more wax here as I'm starting to work with a fairly small head. Build up a little tiny bit of a head and then I'm going to whip finish. At this point I'm basically done. Just to add to the effect of the thin skin, I'm going to use a little bit of the Clear Cure Goo Hydro and I'm just going to apply that to the top of the fly. It kind of works as a head cement as well as adds a nice little gloss and a sheen to the thin skin. Once it soaks in a little bit, I'll hit it with a light and make sure it's good and dry. Once we're done with this step, I'm just going to come around and adjust the fibers of the fly and rough up the, the head of the fly so that it looks correct and nice and buggy. It's not the prettiest fly in the world, but I think it's going to be really effective for, for trout, and it's a, it's a great alternative to, to some of the other options that are out there for tying this style of fly. You can't tie them incredibly small, but... Um, there are seed beads and lots and lots of colors out there that I think will make this a winner. Hope that helps.